Hello and welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about sampling methods in research. In this video, we will explore the types of sampling methods, the techniques and give some examples of each with some practice questions at the end. Firstly, we need to understand the difference between a population and a sample. The population is the entire group that you want to draw conclusions about, while the sample is the specific group of individuals that you will collect data from in a research. The population can be defined in terms of geographical location, age, income and many other characteristics. Although it can be very broad or quite narrow, however, it is important to carefully define your target population according to the purpose and practicalities of your project. If the population is very large, demographically mixed and geographically dispersed, it might be difficult to gain access to a representative sample. Now let's look at sampling frame. The sampling frame is the actual list of individuals that the sample will be drawn from. Ideally, it should include the entire population and exclude every other person who is not part of that population. A good example of sampling frame is you doing a research on the working conditions at a company. In this case, your population is all the 1000 employees of that company. However, your sampling frame is the company's HR's database which lists the names and contact details of every employee. Now let's talk about sample size. The sample size of your research is the ideal number of participants that should be involved in your research. The number of individuals you should include in your sample depends on various factors including the size and variability of the population and your research design. Types of sampling methods There are two types of sampling methods. Firstly, we have probability sampling methods. Probability sampling means that every member of the population has a chance of being selected. It is mainly used in quantitative research. If you want to produce results that are representative of the whole population, probability sampling techniques are the most valid choice. There are four main types of probability sample. Number one, we have simple random sampling. In a simple random sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Your sampling frame should include the whole population. To conduct this type of sampling, you can use tools like random number generators or other techniques that are based entirely on chance. Number two, we have systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is similar to simple random sampling but it is usually slightly easier to conduct. Every member of the population is listed with a number, but instead of randomly generating numbers, individuals are chosen at regular intervals. Number three, we have stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the population into subpopulations that may differ in important ways. It allows you to draw more precise conclusions by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented in the sample. To use this sampling method, you divide the population into subgroups called strata based on the relevant characteristics, for example, gender, age range, income bracket, or job role. Therefore, based on the overall proportion of the population, you calculate how many people should be sampled from each subgroup. Thereafter, you use random or systematic sampling to select a sample from each subgroup. Lastly, under probability sampling, we have cluster sampling. Cluster sampling also involves dividing the population into subgroups, but in this case, each subgroup should have similar characteristics to the whole sample. Then instead of sampling individuals from each subgroups, you randomly select entire subgroups. If it is practically possible, you might include every individual from each sampled cluster. If the clusters themselves are large, you can also sample individuals from within each cluster using one of the techniques we have already mentioned. This is called multi-stage sampling. This method is good for dealing with large and dispersed populations, but there is more risk of error in the sample as there could be substantial difference between clusters. It is difficult to guarantee that the sampled clusters are really representative of the whole population. The second type of sampling method is the non-probability sampling method. In a non-probability sample, individuals are selected based on non-random criteria. This type of sample is easier and cheaper to access, but it has a high risk of sampling bias. That means that inferences you can make about the population are weaker than with probability samples and your conclusion may be more limited. Non-probability sampling techniques 
are often used in explanatory and qualitative research. In these types of research, the aim is not to test a hypothesis about a broad population, but to develop an initial understanding of a small or under-researched population. There are four main types of non-probability sampling. One, we have convenient sampling. A convenient sample simply includes the individuals who happen to be most accessible to the researcher. This is an easy and inexpensive way to gather initial data, but there is no way to tell if the sample is representative of the population, so it can't produce generalizable results. Two, we have voluntary response sampling. Similar to a convenience sample, a voluntary response sample is mainly based on ease of access. In this case, instead of the researcher choosing participants and directly contacting them, people volunteer themselves, for example, by responding to a public online survey. Voluntary response samples are always at least somewhat biased, as people from a certain group will inherently be more likely to volunteer than others. 3. We have purposive sampling. This type of sampling, also known as judgment sampling, involves the researcher using their expertise to select a sample that is most useful to the purpose of the research. It is often used in qualitative research, where the researcher wants to gain detailed knowledge about a specific phenomenon rather than make statistical inferences, or where the population is very small and specific. An effective purposive sample must have clear criteria and rationale for inclusion. And finally, under non-probability sampling, we have snowball sampling. If the population is hard to access, snowball sampling can be used to recruit participants via other participants. The number of people you have access to increases or snowballs as you get in contact with more people. In summary, when you conduct research about a group of people, it's really possible to collect data from every person in that group. Instead, you select a sample. The sample is the group of individuals who will actually participate in the research. To draw valid conclusions from your research, you have to carefully decide how you will select a sample that is representative of the group as a whole. You should clearly explain how you selected your sample in the methodology section of your research or thesis. There are two types of sampling methods. Probability sampling involves random selection, allowing you to make strong statistical inferences about the whole group. Non-probability sampling involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria, allowing you to easily collect data. At this point, we would like you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, like and even share this video, and leave any comments or questions you have below. Meanwhile, here are some practice questions about sampling.